Guys, I am so excited. That's right, what's in this box is a dream of mine. Honestly, a couple animals that I didn't know that I would ever keep. It's crazy what the Reptarium has done. You know, our ability to actually get animals that were dream animals of mine that I never had an opportunity to do, I am now gonna do. Remember the enclosure we built a couple weeks ago? Well, I now have inhabitants for that. That's right, these guys are gonna go into that enclosure, which I am so excited about. Let's go ahead and roll that unboxing reel. And here we go, you guys are gonna love these things. I am excited. I've been kind of on the hunt for these for the last probably two or three weeks and finally my buddy found a pair of them and sent me pictures and I said, we got to get them. So I am stoked on it. Uh, there's a chance I'm gonna lose a little bit of blood while I'm doing this, so uh, bear with me here. And not necessarily from a bite standpoint, although that's always possible too. And here we go, the first little peek. Oh my goodness, it's crazy. These are like little dot, oh, I, I can't even believe this, guys. I'm gonna just make you guys wait because I'm freaking out right now. This thing is gorgeous. Okay, here we go, hand in. Ah! Ooh. Oh my gosh, it is a little dinosaur, people. I'm telling you, oh, come on, little buddy. Come on out, come on, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Look at that. And why I say I'm gonna lose some blood is not because they really are biters, but they are so sharp. Whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. They have such sharp little claws. It's absolutely ridiculous. And they are unbelievable. I'm telling you what, so of course these are green tree monitor lizards. That's right, these are Persina. And I tell you what, they are absolutely stunning. And oh my gosh, these nails are ripping me apart like crazy. But this is a unbelievable, beautiful specimen. One of the prettier ones that I've ever seen. And that was the reason I was really looking for some amazing examples. This I'm almost positive is the boy. We'll take a look at the female here in a second, but oh my goodness. Take a look at that. I mean, does that look like a little raptor or something like that, that green color? Now, tree monitors actually come in a few different colors. There's yellows, there's greens, there's blues, there's even black tree monitors, and there's even a couple other species. These are the most common, to be totally honest with you. But the thing is, they're also the most brazen, meaning they come out a lot, right? A lot of the like blues that are absolutely beautiful, the Makurai, actually hide all the time. So we wanted to get a pair that people could actually see, right? Because as cool as an animal is, if you can't see it in an enclosure, I mean, people aren't gonna be that excited about it. And I tell you what, that is one exciting lizard right there. I cannot believe it. Who doggy. Let's go ahead and look at the female. And like I mentioned, I believe this is the female. Let's go ahead and get her out now. You can tell she's got a little bit different body structure and she's a little bit fatter down that midsection, which is kind of typical of a female, a little bit smaller as well. Absolutely stunning. That male was ridiculous, but the female is absolutely gorgeous as well. So I am so excited to get these guys set up later on. Oh gosh, they have nails. Whew, I just If you guys could feel, I mean, my hands are all just little miniature little rips, you know, little tears in my hand. And that's because they have those nails to climb trees. They also have this little prehensile tail that's absolutely wonderful. So wow, is this gonna be a great new addition to the Reptarium? I am gonna freak out. People are gonna love these. Now, unfortunately, probably not gonna come out because they have such sharp tails, but you'll be able to look at them and then we can start working with training them. These guys will eat meat, they'll also eat bugs, they'll eat fish, they'll eat all kinds of different things. So I am so excited, I have loved these. Ever since I used to go visit Forrest, now Des and Steve's place, they had the beautiful tree monitors. I was always like, I one day want to own them, but we really didn't have a place. But now that we have the Reptarium and we can do stuff like this, that is absolutely incredible. So what do you say we get with Jessica, have her set up that enclosure so that these guys can go in here in just the next hour or so. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. As always, Jessica's gonna soup up the cage for the green tree monitors. I know you've got a vision. Yeah, I've got a plan. All right, well, let's go ahead and let her do her magic <laughs> and then we'll put them in. There's always that fine line about making an amazingly beautiful enclosure, but also being able to see the animal, but you have to also know the species you're working with. When it comes to green tree monitors, they like to hide sometimes too. They need that security. They actually will come out quite a bit, but they also need places where they feel secure. So we have to make sure that we're putting areas in here where they can get away from the kind of eyesight of people. And Jessica's doing a great job of not only building a beautiful enclosure, but also building an enclosure that is practical and also very healthy for the animals herself. They're gonna be able to be seen, but also get plenty of room to get away from people. 
And here we go. Again, they've got some hiding spots in here, which is really important for tree monitors to have spots that they can actually hide and kind of get away from one another. But at the same time, they have all this climbing area and all this cool stuff. I mean, I think these guys are going to love this new enclosure. And you can just see, look at how effortlessly they climb. That is absolutely incredible. Look at how good they look. I mean, can you imagine just coming around the corner, seeing it, see how they'll curl their tails and stuff like that? That prehensile tail is so cool. I tell you what, I am so stoked on this right now. They look absolutely incredible in this enclosure. And uh, wow, I t I'm on cloud nine, guys. Getting new animals is always exciting, but getting animals that are this stunning and this beautiful, oh my goodness, that is absolutely incredible. Oh my God, I, I'm, I don't even know what to say. This is amazing. And by the way, welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is as good as mine. And speaking of Reptile Army, we've got socks, we've got sweatpants, we've got masks, we've got hats, we've got tank tops, we've got shirts, we've got backpacks, we've got all kinds of stuff. Join the movement, ReptileArmy.com. 10% of the proceeds go to US Ark. The other proceeds go to educating people. Listen, join the movement. Be part of the solution, people. ReptileArmy.com. Let's go ahead and get this clutch of eggs right here. This is actually a pinstripe hat for ghosts. It's a nice, pretty female, but I do see a slug or two in there. Uh, I hope that there's some good eggs, that's for sure. She's bred to a pretty cool male, which was the Silver Streak Bamboo Walma. So again, it's a pastel, it's a black pastel, it's a bamboo, and it's a walma. Absolute ripper. Put that pinstripe in there. Now you've got that gene going on in there. Who doggy? We can get some good stuff. Let's hope for some good eggs. Come on, mama, don't disappoint me. Come on, girl. Yeah, it's a mixed bag. There's no doubt about that. Definitely not a great clutch, but you know, not a terrible clutch either. I mean, there's definitely some good eggs and I can really even see some of the discoloration in this egg right here. Just basically telling me that there actually is a network of veins. So there is some fertility because sometimes when you get a clutch like this, where there's fertility and infertility, the actual good looking eggs aren't always good and don't make it to term. But in this case, it looks like the eggs look like they're pretty good. And it does look like we have two, four good eggs. And unfortunately we have two, four, five slugs. Exactly not the best thing for sure. But you know, at the same time, that's the way it goes. Ups and downs of the year. Uh, overall, the fertility has been really great this year, but we're gonna have some downsides, guys. That's the way it is, and I'm sharing it all with you, right? So four eggs go into the incubator. We're gonna cut these guys in 57 days. Gonna be some bangers. I always talk about the fact that I'm learning all the time, and one of the things I've learned is that you see all these marks here. Chuck wallas are the same as iguanas, where they store sodium and then sneeze it out. So, of course, we had no idea that, and I came in a couple times, and I was like, why is this enclosed? all snotted up and stuff like that. Well, sure enough, that's the case. You know, chuck wallas actually can't metabolize sodium as well. So uh, just like the iguanas, we have to clean this enclosure like crazy. Milk frogs have been here for the last maybe two or three weeks and they're doing really well. Now they're becoming much more brazen. They're coming out, sometimes hanging out on the log right there. I mean, it's definitely a huge hit at the Reptarium. People love frogs. I love frogs, but it is so cool to see how the milk frogs have kind of adapted here and people are just loving them. Down in the colubrid room, which only can mean one thing. Egg time! That's right. And oh, look at that. That is a Mexican black king snake right there. And I love those guys. They are really amazing. Now, she is a relatively small girl. There's no doubt about that. So I'm not imagining there's going to be a giant clutch of eggs here. But we'll get her cage cleaned up, get her some fresh water. And fingers crossed there will be some nice eggs in here. And yes, there are. Now, again, not a big clutch. I wasn't expecting a big clutch because she's a first year female and she's a little bit small. But she is definitely got a beautiful clutch and really overall the fertility has been really amazing down here i always say that and it always jinxes me the next clutch i pull will probably be all slugs but the point is is i've been very happy with the production down here two four five eggs that is absolutely beautiful we do have one more clutch to pull down here today uh, i tell you what egg season is pretty amazing let me know in the comments if you guys are enjoying it and what you're looking forward to the most hatching and then the next clutch is actually an oreo pueblin and like i said let's hope i didn't jinx myself by saying that i'm getting all good eggs and then end up with the slug clutch here. The Oreo problems, of course, are these monkeys here, which just have a little bit less red. And thankfully, mostly good eggs. I do see one potential little slugger in here, but this is an interesting clutch too. And again, this is kind of a low expression Oreo, right? So it's not like really good. It still has a lot of red on it. The ones you really want are the ones without red. And the male that we bred it to didn't have hardly any red. So half these
these babies will probably come out black and white and some of them will have a little bit of red. Very weird clutch though, because <laughs> we got this little slugger egg right here. This is definitely a bad egg, but look at the size of these eggs here and then the size of this egg. And the same goes here. I mean, I always find it weird when it happens. It's almost like there was one egg that got split into two little eggs right there. Really bizarre. I don't know what happens when that happens. We've seen it quite a bit this year, but we have two, four, six beautiful eggs, one little tiny slugger there. So all in all, it turned out to be a pretty good day. Fertility is still good down here in the Kluver Room and baby season is right around the corner. In case you guys didn't know, we actually do a podcast called Checking and we do it Wednesday. Noah does one Friday and then I do a snake talk solo or a guest on every Saturday. You can go to Checking In on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. Go ahead and get us to 50,000. We're actually 100 subscribers away from 50,000. Help us get there and help us actually get to 100,000 actually, but definitely come check it out. It's always a fun time just hanging out with the podcast. All right. That time of the day? Yeah. Before lunch? I'm hungry. I just ordered Panda Express. Oh, nice. nice. Okay, anyways, so we got tamale. It's up to me and Crikey Mikey. Are you Misty Mike right now? Misty Mike. Yeah, Lizards, he's Misty Mike. Okay, so me and Misty Mike here, we're gonna, we're gonna get this fella tamed down. No, watch, I told him this. Come in. Come here. See that? Ashley does speedy like a cat. Come here. You get him. Mike! You're good. You're good. Mike! You're good. Mike! Mike! Just set him down on the ground. Mike! Mike, help me! You're doing great. Professionals. Boom. That's, doing fantastic. That's great. Cut his face. I think he's doing good. Ooh. Whoa. Don't put him on my face. Whoa. I didn't even know they hissed. Did you hear that? Let's let this baby go! Woo! Hey, Somali. That was good. What are, we, what are we doing with them now? Oh, we didn't think, no. Okay, well. so we've never had to really tame down a tegu. Ours yeah. have just been pretty tame by nature. Give me one second, guys. DoorDash is here. My man! We appreciate you. Alright, so I'm gonna go eat this uh, panda, and Mike's gonna take care of Tamale. You better get your... Royal Heine back here. Hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog. If you did, do me a favor. Here's a playlist. If you hit a couple of those videos, it helps me out. I appreciate you. Over here, you can also subscribe to this channel. That means a lot to me as well. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Make sure to be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.